Hello, today we'll be looking at how to migrate virtual machines out of Workstation and onto a larger type of environment. In our case, it's going to be vSphere ESXi, which is a hypervisor. And for those of you who don't understand what that means is we'll be taking it from a virtualized environment, working on a PC or a Mac or you know laptop, you know something that's more user uh, specific to a server-based hypervisor. So you've got the operating system, in this case, VMware's vSphere ESXi running directly on what we call the bare metal. So directly on a server. And a server, of course, provides you with more horsepower. So you've got literally more CPUs. You've got generally more memory and more disk space. And it is dedicated to running virtual machines. So you don't have this Windows like I have. I have Windows 11 Pro here and I've got Workstation 16 Pro running on top of that. Now that's great for a very, very, very small environment. I want to run some tests. That's perfect. What if I want to expand? I want to have more virtual machines or let's say you're a very small business. You had a very small app running a small database that was running as a virtual machine on your machine. And as your things grow, all of a sudden you're realizing, hey, I need to keep my PC on at night because George over there or Mary over there, you know, getting into my system at night to be able to access the data and so forth. And it's growing and it's using more processing power from your machine is slowing it down. That would be a good um, scenario where you'd want to move over to a dedicated server for that. By the way, please, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And of course, please, please subscribe. That really helps us out, not only with the algorithms, but, you know, a small channel like uh, ours really uh, benefit from all those subscriptions and from the likes that we are getting. So thank you so much for that. And thank you to all the people who have subscribed and who keep watching these videos. I hope they're helpful. So let's go ahead and migrate one of my virtual machines and I'll show you a little bit around. So this is an environment where I've got two virtual machines. So I've got one Windows 10 machine that I run, for example, this, this is just a test environment, but I can run uh, viruses in. So if I get something that I, I find suspicious and whatnot, then I could load it onto this VM, run it, and if it damages the virtual machine and the Windows gets infected, I don't really care because it is protected, it is cut off. And at that point, I can just wipe it and start a new one. No harm done. So the other one that I'm using is uh, Nessus, uh, which is basically a product to scan for vulnerabilities. If you haven't tried that, definitely look at that product. It's um, tenable and it's really outstanding for that purpose. So I'm gonna just randomly, it doesn't really matter which one I pick. Uh, I think this one here, uh, you know, they're both about the same size, size-wise from a hard drive point of view. So I'm gonna go ahead and migrate this. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is do file and do export to an OVF. Now I'm gonna go ahead and send it directly to an export directory and I'm gonna leave its name there, not a big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And in this case, it is also a test virtual machine that I had. I had to uh, demo this to a client and wanted to show them what the product looked like. So I basically just set it up and uh, was able to put it on a laptop, bring it with me, spin it up. So for half an hour, 45 minutes it ran. And after that, it's apparently uh, stayed uh, back or a copy of it stayed here on my desktop. But um, so once we have migrated this over uh, to a drive, I'll be able to then send it over to um, to a server and we'll be able to load it up there. So while we wait for this, because this might take a little while, let's take a look at what we have from VMware. Now I've covered this in multiple different videos and trying to cut these so you get specifically what information you're looking for. And when you go to a server-based environment, what you've got are you've got a few pieces, as you can tell here, and you've got a bunch of different flavors, but really the ones that you're looking at, you're looking at the hypervisor, and it's called vSphere. And when you install it, it's gonna tell you it's an ESXi host. So the full product is VMware, vSphere, ESXi, and it happens to be a hypervisor. So the latest version as of this uh, recording is 8.0b. They come out every, you know, I'll say month, month and a half, two months. As soon as there is either a um, new feature, uh, there's a bug they need to fix. So there's fixes, security uh, measures that need to be put into place because they found something or someone's found a way of getting into something. Uh, they 
keep changing these. Uh, usually it's just an incremental change. So it's a step-by-step -step thing and you can't usually tell the difference between 8.0 and 8.0, you know, A and B. I mean, they all look the same. It's the coding behind it that's changed slightly in order, in this case, uh, this patch was to prevent uh, someone from running a specific uh, code against one of the services. So once you have this in place, what that does is it basically gives you, let me just make sure that I review this here. So this brings us to an actual server. And of course I've got some videos on how to install this and this will show you what it looks like. All right, now what I want you to keep in mind is the word host in this case means one physical server. And the reason I bring this up is because um, you'll have multiple virtual machines potentially running on here. And because of the number of processors and memory and disk space you can have on a server, you could have anywhere from you know a few to uh, 40 different virtual machines, depending on what you've got. So it becomes a little confusing when you're talking physical versus virtual. So let's try to keep it as simple as possible. So a host is a physical box in this case, and this host is running virtual machines. Right now, I actually only have one, which is a VCSA, and I have a video on how I installed this, in case you're curious and you wanna see what that is. But really, the, the VCSA is also known as vCenter, and what it does is it's another way of managing when you have multiple hosts. So if you only have one, you can do like I did. You type in the IP address, you go right into it, and you can manage it from here. And from here, I could manage my virtual machines. If I wanted to create, register, and so forth, this is where I do it. Now, if you want to manage multiple machines, you can go to vCenter, and this is what it looks like. So what it does is it allows you to create a data center or multiple data centers. So if I had multiple locations, you can go ahead and do that. Now, in this case, the machine that I'm going to be using is this one here. If you'll notice, the IP address ends with 137. So it is this machine here. And if I expand it, I've got one virtual machine here, the same one that I see here. So it looks and it look and feels a little different. But you know, what's nice is you get all this information and you get all kinds of... So if, uh, if you want to play with these, by the way, you simply go and download these. They will run for 60 days, I believe. And uh, you can test them out, they're in trial mode, and you have that amount of time to go and put an actual license. If you put in the base license, like the, you know, if you buy, the cheapest you can buy is like Essentials, I believe, which provides you with the ability to run three physical machines or three hosts and each host can have two processors. So again, if you buy a processor, uh, you could have a few cores on a processor or you can have a whole lot of cores depending on if you're getting, for example, an Intel, a silver or gold or platinum. And of course, the more cores you have, the more VMs you'll be able to run in theory. It all depends on what you're running, by the way. Some applications out there and some operating systems and some systems will prefer a faster core to multiple slower cores. Again, that is entirely up to your environment and whatever manufacturers of the software and, and services that you're trying to get on here will tell you to use. So you need to keep that in mind. All right, so let's go back and see if the, I've lost my, let's see if it's, uh, okay, so it's still running. So we're gonna give it a bit of time. And once that is done, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to upload so we're gonna take that file and we're gonna go ahead and send it over to this local machine. Now, whether I use the vCenter or whether I use uh, you know, this interface here directly on the host, that really makes no difference in the sense that it, it, they're both going to the same machine. And uh, in the end, um, I guess if you only have a single host, if you've just migrated from a workstation to a server, most likely you're going to have uh, VMware ESXi, the hypervisor itself on one machine. I ideally, you'd want to have more than one to have the ability to migrate or move things around for maintenance. If you're very small, you probably don't have a scenario where you absolutely need to have things open 24 seven. If you do, uh, then you're gonna wanna look at having more than one physical box and you're gonna wanna look at the higher end editions of the ESXi or the vSphere. So you've got, for example, when you get into the enterprise and uh, and so forth, you've got more features like in Essentials, for example, if you want to migrate one machine to another server, and let me just show you what that looks like, you can right click, you click on Migrate, I'm 
one. So and you click on migrate. That's because I'm not in the right place. <laughs> Go here, click migrate, and it gives me the ability to migrate. Now, if I've got the essential, then I don't have the capability to migrate this virtual machine live, meaning that it will not migrate while it is on. So in essential, I would have to turn off the virtual machine, then migrate it, then turn it back on on the new one. Now, if you're, again, if you're a small environment where it's, uh, it's, it's not critical, not a problem. If you're working for a larger organization or even a small organization where you have people that require access at all time for a database, for whether it's you know HR related or accounting related or CRM related for salespeople, whatever it is, um, then you're gonna wanna get the license for the higher end features. Now, the other interesting part here and if you watch other videos, I'm probably repeating myself, but essentially it is the same code, meaning that if you download standard or you download enterprise plus, or you download the essentials, these are actually the same. What makes the difference is you, you load it, you're in trial mode. As soon as you put in your license, it will either, you know, basically will take away features that are not part of that edition. So if you type in the product code, the, the key code for essentials, then you would lose high availability. You would lose like, other things that are part of, let's say, enterprise. So that is how that works. It is nice though, because then, uh, for example, for myself, I don't need to have uh, five or six different versions of the ISO files with me at all times, because sometimes I'm in the field, I've got a laptop, uh, I've got the ISOs with me in case I need them, so anything goes bad. Well, as long as I've got the proper uh, key code to put back in to get the functionality, it's not a problem. I don't need to worry about the actual ISO. So let me just see if our, this is still going. So we are back. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and, okay, so we're back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here and we are going to go to our storage. We're gonna go to our data store. We're gonna go to our browser. And what we're gonna do here is we are going to create a directory and I'm calling, I'm gonna call it, yeah, or call it import, create directory. And I'm gonna go ahead and shove it in here. And I'm gonna say upload, move this off screen for a second. All right. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and import all of these files. So we want to take them all. So say upload this one, upload that one. So I'm going to go ahead and import all of these. All right, so now that that's done, now what you can do is go back to virtual machines, right click, create a register. In this case, we want to deploy, say next. What are we going to call it? Well, we're going to call it window 10, um, kind of old here we go all right and now it's going to ask me to go ahead and drop drop the files so i'm going to select these i'm going to go ahead and do that and do next and where do i want to send them i want to send them here i'm going to do next now which what do i want to use i mean okay, i'm going to leave it on there i'm going to keep thin and i'm not going to turn it on automatically i'm going to do next and i'm going to do finish and then if I go into virtual machines here, now you'll notice that I have two of them. And on the bottom here, it is transferring the information over. So now it's just a matter of being a little patient and waiting for this to complete. Okay, so here we are. So now that is complete and our virtual machine is here. And now, of course, we can go into it. We could start it. We can go and edit it. So at that point, as you'll notice, we have the equivalent of what we had before. Uh, there's a little message there. Let's see what the message says. And it says it's being managed by vCenter server, which is why we're seeing the little message here. So what it wants us to do, because I've got vCenter set up, uh, it wants me to go through there, but you could modify it from here. And of course, if I could go into the vCenter here. It is also there. And from here, I could go and edit the settings just the same as I would on the other interface. But here, I don't get any messages or anything of the sort. Now, if I want to start, whether I do I go from here or from here, it's just a matter of right-clicking, going to power and powering on. Or of course, the obvious is just to press right here and to start it. And all that would require is for me to click on start there. And there is my virtual machine that opens up. It is now going to load VMware. This is a Windows 10 machine. So it is starting as we can see. So that is how you migrate uh, using the export and import 
uh, from a workstation or I mean if you've got a really old version of VMware you could also use this if uh, migration proves to be a challenge that's a sure and easy way to do it of course it does require a bit more um, you know it's not as easy as right clicking clicking on migrate but that is how you could do it so I'm going to go ahead and close this but that was the secret. So I'm Bob Pellin, CTO Bob. I hope this was helpful to someone out there. Of course, leave some comments below. I love reading those. And again, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps us out. And you can visit us at www.ctobob.com as well. We do uh, tend to put articles there occasionally. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.